a wise master builder a wise master builder i want to talk about the wisdom for building the wisdom for building the wisdom for building remember we are still talking about the three kinds of wisdom and these three kinds of wisdom all of them are needed when building you cannot build without any of them the three kinds of wisdom can we remind ourselves maybe very fast about these three kinds of wisdom uh -huh. in greek now we have uh -huh, we have come to that level you see we are even understanding greek things and greek words can we remind ourselves very fast what is the very kind the very first kind of wisdom that we learned about number one sophia and we said that sophia is insight into mysteries insight into hidden things insight into secrets that is what we call sophia we say that sophia is theoretical wisdom it is that light that is casted upon an object that was covered in darkness that you may be able to see it or it is the uncovering of something that was covered so that you may be able to see it it is the insight into deep things secret things and things that have not been seen by men or that are hidden from men that is what we call sophia we went to the second level of wisdom which was sunesis sunesis we said it is critical wisdom critical wisdom and we say that this now is under is the understanding understanding we gave another word discernment another one comprehension another one interpretation another one perception so we said that sunesis is the critical wisdom kama vile unasikia ikitwa critical wisdom it's the same as you hear or you learn about critical thinking so it is being able to understand hard things being able to interpret hidden things being able to discern being able to comprehend difficult matters you see and to be able to interpret things so he said like uh, for example when you have a vision or a dream that dream that came to you was sophia because something that was covered maybe you had a dream about what will happen next year that thing has been hidden from men but now it has been uncovered to you that is sophia but now you need to go to the next level of understanding what you saw and we say that many people have sophia they have dreams they see things but without sunesis sunesis is the ability to understand what you have seen or what you have heard so without sunesis even what you saw might not benefit you but you must also get understanding you understand what you saw then after understanding we go to the last level or the last kind of wisdom which is shout it shout just shout phronesis phronesis we said that phronesis is practical wisdom is practical wisdom is now the place where you apply the understanding the sunesis Maybe for example you saw yourself as a millionaire or a billionaire now what you saw that day was sophia you see god unveiled something and showed you becoming a millionaire you see now understanding or synesis is being able to understand how to work it out you see being able to understand and to comprehend and to interpret that dream then when we come to phronesis is now being able to do it is doing what is needed to do for you to become a millionaire so you must act on your sunesis on your understanding on your interpretation the problem with many of us maybe you have a dream maybe you lack sunesis you are not able to interpret or understand it now it does not help you you see and some can be able to interpret the dream or even understand the dream but many of them never take the steps that are necessary they never act they never do anything towards what they saw and so they never come to that place what that man lacks is not vision because they have already seen it's not understanding they have already understood but they lack the wisdom that makes you to act to do things in the right way that's what they lack i told you that phronesis is a force it causes you to do the right things at the right time in the right place and in the right way that is phronesis 
It helps you and causes you to speak the right things. You see? It helps you to say the right things to the right people. You see? At the right time and even in the right way. That is phronesis. And I told you, it is a fixed mental attitude. A mindset. A fixed mindset. That determines how you react or you act. When situations and circumstances come. So a man full of phronesis... We saw that many times they will say things without reasoning or without premeditation and they find themselves speaking the right things. You see? You remember? Paul is being told by God, by the Holy Spirit, that when he then, or he is going to the emperor, he, he is going to be judged. But the Lord tells him, do not even premeditate about what you will say. But when you get there, I will give you the right words. That is phronesis. Phronesis. That is why the Bible says that you, I have heard with a learned ear. <laughs> and so, I speak with a learned tongue. You have given me a learned tongue that I might be able to speak a word in season to a weary heart or to a weary soul. So it is the ability to speak the right thing to a person according to what they need. This is where wise counsel is. That when couples come to you, you find yourself, as you sit down with them and you begin to talk to them, you find yourself giving them the right counsel and advice. So the Lord gives you words, even without premeditation. Many of you can only say the right things when we give you time to go and think about that thing. But phronesis is where now the word of God has has created a mindset in your mind that you always have an answer to anyone who comes to you. And that is the right answer. That is phronesis. Phronesis is also expressed not only through us, but you find yourself always doing the right things at the right time. So you know when to make a call. You know when to ignore a call. It is the phronesis talking in the inside of you. And I gave you a few examples that we can all understand. Like maybe when you are walking in town, let me, let, me, let, me, let me repeat that because we are living in days that are very dangerous. And I do not want you to be a victim of that. And then someone comes and snatches your phone from your hand. Now if you had phronesis and uh, you have matured in the area of phronesis, that wisdom could have taught you and showed you that you need to, to put your, that phone into your pocket or on the other hand, when that person was coming to snatch it. That is phronesis. Phronesis. That is the thing you hear many people saying, I don't know what told me to, I wanted to go this way, but I don't know what told me to go the other way. It's the Holy Spirit. You'll understand that this wisdom is the Holy Spirit who works in the inside of us. That is what you hear people saying, I, I wanted to board that car. I don't know what told me in the inside of me not to board that car, and I boarded another car. It is phronesis. We saw that when you have phronesis, you will not die early. You will not die prematurely because it comes with the length of days. You cannot find yourself in an accident when you have phronesis. You cannot cause an accident because phronesis tells you do not turn this way but turn this way. It is phronesis. It tells you don't go in this way but go on the other way because the Bible says that the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And the Bible says them that have wisdom cannot stumble for they are, their paths are lighted. How will they stumble? They are walking in the light. They are walking in the day. So you will always have that wisdom to teach you in the inside of you and to cause you no, it does not only tell you, but it is a force that causes you. It causes you. You know, we read on, uh, uh, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, last time, that one of the things that phronesis does is that it causes people to become rich and to sit on thrones. It causes, as long as you have it, by default, there are things that it causes you to do. So when you see many times you are trying to do something and you are not able to do it, Many times check in the area of, of phronesis, the wisdom to act, the wisdom to do things, the wisdom to become what you sow, phronesis. These are the three levels of wisdom. And you need both or all of them in building. Whatever you are going to build, because we are all builders. Yes, we are all builders. You are building your own life. You are building a family. You are building a financial system. 
you are building even the ministry the church, we are builders in any place where the lord has placed us we are builders and you need all these dimensions of wisdom in building and without any of them you cannot build effectively proverbs chapter 24 we have now begun proverbs chapter 24 verse 3 says proverbs chapter 24 verse 3 proverbs chapter 24 verse 3 the bible says through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established let's just stay here before you go to the next verse through wisdom a house is built through wisdom a house is built and then number two by understanding it is established so wisdom is for building a house then if you want the house to be established it must be built by understanding now when we talk about establishment we are talking about stability stability and longevity that thing is stable and it will endure stability now building is not just building you might build something that is not well established so in other words it is not stable and so it cannot endure but when you want to build a house that is established that is firm that is stable and that endures then you must build by understanding remember this understanding we are talking about here is the second level of wisdom the synesis you must be able to analyze things you must be able to comprehend things what will i use why do i need to use this and this now just the other day just behind here there is a house that fell they had constructed seven story building and it fell down now they had the wisdom to build they lacked understanding because if they had understanding understanding is where you analyze that if i want to build a seven story building there is a specific metal that i must use there is a specific way i must build so what they lack is understanding understanding is the comprehension is is being able to analyze things that if i want this to happen then these and these and this must be done i must use these and this material if i want this kind of results is what we call understanding so nurses, comprehension being able to comprehend things so what they did they knew they had the vision of the seven story building they had even drawn it so the vision they had it but what they lacked was sunesis. They did not know. They did not have an understanding that if you use this kind of... <laughs> yes, engineers know and those architects, they, they, they know, they will tell you. If you want even a hundred story building, you cannot use the same metal or the same materials that you use for ten story building. But imagine someone who does not have an understanding and they think that they can build a hundred story building the same way they build a five story building. What they lack is understanding. So for the house to be established, for the house to be stable, what lacked in that house is stability. It, was, it could not stay for long. It was not firm. Because they lacked understanding. Brothers and sisters, when you build a family without understanding, that is why we need to teach even those who are about to get to marriage that you need to, understand, you need to know what marriage is. You need to ask yourself, this is the end goal. This is what I want to achieve in marriage. And if this is what I want to achieve, then these are the requirements. These are the things that I must use to build my marriage. If you build a marriage without understanding, it will not last. Especially in our days where people are deceived so easily. Ladies and men deceive so easily, you see? And so they get into marriage without understanding. And when they get into marriage, it's like it's the time they, they began to learn about marriage. But you need to ask yourself, where do I want to get in life? Then you be honest to yourself. Now, because I want to build a 10-story building in my marriage, I cannot use some kinds of metals. But see how men are ignorant in marriage. They are just doing anything, anytime, in any way. At any time they want to do it. But not, not many of them really sit down. And they ask God for her. You know the Bible says that by wisdom. A woman builds her own house with her own hands. 
a family is built, brother and sister. If you see the family standing, if you see them, they have joy, the children are grown up and everything is good. It took wisdom to build that house. It took even understanding for those children, you see, to be also firm and to be established and to be stable. It took understanding. Then the next verse, Oh my God, help us today. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So number one, through wisdom, the house is built, is raised up. Now through wisdom, it is established, it is stable, it cannot fall. You see, then the next one, the Bible says that through knowledge or by knowledge, it is filled. The rooms are filled with pleasant things and precious things. So if you lack knowledge, then your house will be empty. No matter how much you have built it, but it will be empty. And I told you, these are some of the people, you find them, and they are always complaining. There are no pleasant things in their lives. There are no precious things in their lives. What that person lacks is knowledge. They do not have knowledge. But when you have knowledge, your house will be filled with good things. With good things. So you must have the wisdom to build the house. We must have the wisdom to make it established, to, to build stable houses. Number three, you must have knowledge to fill that house. That house will be filled with good things, with treasures, precious things. And remember, precious things and treasures are never on the ground, are never on the dust. That is why you need knowledge, because remember I told you, knowledge is when things are uncovered. And because a house should be filled with things of gold and silver, it takes knowledge, it takes of fear that the Lord may uncover things, that you may see them, that you may bring them into your house. It takes knowledge to fill your house and even your life with good things. Let me ask you this question, and I want you to answer yourself. Do, are you that kind of a man who is full of pleasant things in their lives, precious things in their lives? Or are you that person who is always sorrowful, that kind of a person who always have sore things, bitter things in their lives. Then if you are that kind of a man, from today go and tell the Lord, Father, I pray for knowledge. I pray for Sophia. That my life may be filled with good things, with pleasant things, with precious things. How many precious things do you have in your life? It depends on the Sophia on the knowledge that you have. On the knowledge that you have. So it takes these three things to build. I want us to see a few examples very fast. Especially of, uh, of the buildings that have been made there before. In the Bible. So that we may gain how these three aspects of wisdom are used in building. I want you to know first of all. That even God himself. When he was creating everything. <laughs> He created all things through wisdom. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19. The Bible says, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. <laughs> you see, the Bible says that the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. So the foundations of this war are built on wisdom. Are founded by wisdom. That is why even if there are shakeups, earthquakes and everything, the earth still remains to be stable. It is established by understanding. The Bible says that by understanding, he established the heavens. That is why atukaagi tu, unajua saizi unaona manyumba ya nabomoka. But akuda sikuote tumewai kuwa na wasuasi, at any given time, the heavens can just, uh, huh? Poromoka, they fall on us. And even many times when scientists uh, want to threaten many of you, or to instill fear to you. They always tell you they have seen something coming from where and it is really coming very fast, coming upon the other. And many times these are just theories because the heavens are established. They are stable and they are made stable by understanding that there is no single day that they can fall. Now ask yourself, which other building? But think about the other that we live in. Think about how God has established some things. Think about things like mountain. People come. Seasons come. They leave mountains there. Even the rain that came in the days of Noah. <laughs> the Bible likens stability to mountain. It is saying like we are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. <laughs> but abides forever. Lives forever. 
And God wants us to be established such that we are not we are not carried away, we are not toasted away by every wind of doctrine, but our faith be grounded, our lives be grounded, that when evil or even some other things come, they do not wave you, waver you. You are not wavering, you see? But many of us, we are all, always like this. We are all, no stability, no stability. What you lack is understanding, have understanding. You know why many Christians, even today, their faith is not well... You see, that's why when they are written by a disease, they forget every preaching that the pastor has ever preached. When they are written by something out there, they forget everything that the pastor has ever said. Do you know why? Because they, they lack the understanding of what they had. They do not have understanding. I told you if you can just have understanding of like one concept, like the new creation, that changes the way you see things and the way you, you even do things and the way you think. If you can understand another thing, maybe concerning faith, if you understand another concept, when a man is full of understanding, they are not men who can be swayed. It doesn't matter the floods. It doesn't matter the wind. It doesn't matter the storm. You know Jesus gave a parable of these, of these two men, the wise man and the foolish man. What differentiated them is how they built. The wise man built his house on a rock. The other one built his house on sand. And the same circumstances faced the, both of the houses. Floods came, storms came, winds came. And the Bible says the house that was built on the sand, it fell. And its falling was so great. But what about the house that was well established on a stone? The Bible says that it stood. God wants us to establish things that stand. God wants you to establish Oh my God, a financial system in your life that will go even to the children, your children's children. That is what the Bible says. A wise man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So God does not want us to build anything that is only for ourselves or that can only go for two years. These are people whose business are blossoming today. This year, next year, but after five years you meet them, they have gone back ten steps. God wants you to build something that will last. You see, something that is stable. A marriage that is stable. That is what God wants you to build. But you cannot do all that without wisdom. That is why we are talking about a wise master builder. You must pray today, especially for the grace to build. For the wisdom that is needed for building. That in whatever you are building, that you will build by wisdom. That is the only thing that will make whatever you are doing. To be stable and to endure. The Bible says that, oh, by, by wisdom, God founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heaven. The next verse. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. Do you see? So it took God wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to create the earth. Let, let's see well how it happened. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. The Bible says, the Lord possessed me, this is now wisdom speaking, and wisdom is saying, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of the old. The Lord possessed me, you see, in the beginning, before the works of his old. The Lord possessed me. When you read other versions, they tell you, the Lord brought me forth, or the Lord created me before anything else. So God knew that for him to create anything, he needs wisdom. And so he brought wisdom as the very first thing. Now NIV says, can you give us NIV? NIV, thank you. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works. So the very first thing that God brought forth was wisdom. Before he created anything, wisdom. The next verse, New King James Version. Let's, let's go a bit fast. I have been established from everlasting from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. You know in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we see God created heavens and the earth. But wisdom is saying that even before that beginning, you see, even before that day when God created the heavens and the earth, I was already there. He, has, he had established me. So I was always with God. Even before he thought of creating the heavens and the earth, he brought me forth first. Then the next verse says, when there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water. When there was no water, 
You know, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible now says how the earth was void and how there were floods everywhere and the Spirit of God was hovering upon the floods. But even before then, wisdom is saying, I was already there. I was with God already. Wisdom. Wisdom was there. The next verse says, Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. <laughs> so it shows that it is wisdom that taught God how to settle mountains and to make them stable forever. It was wisdom. It was through wisdom that he established the hills. And you know the hills have never changed. But Mount Kenya has always been there and it will always be, be there. It is the wisdom and the understanding of God that made all that. The next verse says, While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields, or oh, the primal dust of the world. <laughs> the next verse. When he prepared the heaven, I was there. When he drew a cycle on the face of the deep. Before he prepared even the heavens. The one he created the heavens and the earth. But even before then, wisdom was with God when he was prepared. How do I make the heaven? You see? To make sure that it does not fall upon the people. To make sure that it will hold the sun, the moon, and the other things I will create. It was wisdom. They are with God. When he was doing all that, he couldn't do a single thing without wisdom. In other words, let me, let me give you maybe an example. It's like you want to have a manufacturing company. Now, the number one thing you get is the machine to be used. The machine that you will use to manufacture all the other things that you want. That is the very first thing to get. So God knew that if I have to make things and they be stable throughout all ages, then I must first establish wisdom. I must first bring forth wisdom. I must first create wisdom. So that now through wisdom, everything else can be created. That is why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. It should always be at the top of your list. Brothers and sisters, seek, seek wisdom before you, you go and establish your business. Seek wisdom before you get into marriage. Seek wisdom before you do anything. Wisdom is the principal thing. Nothing you can do without wisdom. But when you have wisdom, so much will come. That is why I told you we need to seek for wisdom. Because wealth will come when wisdom is there. Honor will come when wisdom is there. Riches will come when the wisdom is there. Brothers and sisters, get wisdom. And with all you are getting, the Bible says get understanding. It is the principal thing. Even God began by wisdom. Now, you need to set your life, uh, your life right. Seek wisdom more than anything else. Because even God began with wisdom. Seek wisdom. Seek, before getting into anything, get into some serious prayers, brothers and sisters. Don't just ask around your friends. Ah, ni biasharagani squeeze the area. Yeah, you see. Ah, wengine kwanza msichana akatiwe siku ya mbele anaenda anaita committee ya kwao. Ah, unaona brother flani ah, ameniambia. So these people are building on the wrong foundations in the wrong way. But brothers and sisters, before you get into that thing, seek wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Even God knew the importance of wisdom and he began with wisdom verse 28. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, the next verse, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the, fa the foundations of the earth. Now imagine, it's good to ask ourselves some questions. How did God create the, the oceans and he made sure that uh, he has put the boundaries? Imagine God is the one who gave the oceans boundaries and the lakes boundaries. That they, may, but the Bible says, that they may not progress. You know he is the one who, who created this firmament. And he did it actually in day two of creation. You know in the beginning it was, it was just in the deep. But when he created the heavens and the earth, he had to separate the waters. You know the whole earth and everything was full of waters. He had to separate the waters, some of them to, to be the clouds in the firmament and then the dry ground. Now ask yourself... How God did all these things or knew that he needed to do all these things. That he needed to give boundaries to the sea. That they may not regress. You see? It was wisdom with him when he was doing all these things. The next verse says, Then I was beside him as a master craftsman. This is what I wanted you to get. So wisdom was besides God. I want you to get that image. <laughs> 
It might be very difficult for some of you to get it. But this man is trying to show us in the best we can understand. So it was like now God was the creator, but he had an architect. The same way when you want to build your house today, you must go and look for a qualified person, an architect. So the Bible says that wisdom was like a master craftsman and he was besides God. So God was building with wisdom. He was besides God as a master craftsman. So he is the one who mastered everything that was created. Wisdom. He is the one who established everything. He is the one who drawn it for God. Before God established it in the, phys in the physical, wisdom drew that house. Wisdom drew the earth. Wisdom drew the, the, the heavens to God when he was preparing. And wisdom told him, when you build this in this way and this in this way, wisdom taught him. Wisdom taught him. Wisdom. It was besides him as a craftsman. Never build without a craftsman. Never wake up and just think of building a house and begin building that house. No. You must have the qualified personnel to be able to do that. The Bible says, and I was daily rejoice, ah, day, and I was Daily, his delight, rejoicing always before him. He was always before the Lord, rejoicing, rejoicing, always before the Lord. The next verse says, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and my delight was with the sons of man. Now, this is after creation. Now, men have come, and then the Bible says that I, wisdom, you see, I, my delight was with the sons of men, wisdom, came and began to dwell together now with the sons of men, wisdom. Then the next verse says, now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Imagine now, wisdom after telling all that, it is now saying, now knowing that everything you see was built by me, now listen to me. Listen to me. For blessed are those who keep my ways. Blessed are those who keep the ways of the, ble of the, of the wise. The next verse says, hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Hear instruction and be wise. Do not disdain or do not refuse it. Do not reject wisdom. Do not ignore wisdom. We saw that wisdom is calling all of us, telling men to come and receive wisdom. But many people ignore, ignore wisdom, especially when they do not have the fear of the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So wisdom is telling, is saying, do not ignore me. Do not disdain me. Do not reject me. Do not refuse me. The next verse says, Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. Blessed is the man who listens to me daily. Imagine, watching daily at my gates. This is a person who seeks wisdom every day. Brothers and sisters, we should seek wisdom every There is no single day that should pass without you seeking wisdom. Where do we seek wisdom? Number one, I told you, the word of, the word of God is the written wisdom of God. So it means that every day, a wise man should read the word of God and get wisdom from the word of God. Another area, this wise master builder, you shall see him that he is the Holy Spirit. Have time with him. Pray every day. Fellowship with him every day. He is saying that blessed is the man who listens to me. The man who watch daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. Determine that from today, I will always have time with wisdom. <laughs> Oh, listening. They, they spend time watching. Determine that from today, I will have an hour or two where I just sit down. I interact with wisdom. I speak to wisdom and I listen to wisdom. And it will teach you the things of that day. It will teach you the things of your life. It will teach you the things of your marriage. It will teach you how to do your business only when you have time every day with wisdom. But how ignorant we are. We ignore wisdom. We never have even quiet times. And times when we listen to the Lord, and when we, just, we are just fellowshipping without many prayers, but telling him, oh, Father, I come to you. Oh, direct me. Because the, you say that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead us into all truth. You don't have those moments you are talking to the Holy Spirit, telling him, teach me all things. Lead me into light. Direct me, for you are my teacher. Teach me how to do business. Teach me how to do this. Teach me. Have time with wisdom. Don't ignore him. You know, when every believer got born again, one of the things they received is the Holy Spirit. But why are people living ordinary lives? They always ignore who they have in the inside of them. They are ignoring him every day. And the Holy Spirit is a person. 
but you never talk to him. You never say hello to him. <laughs> and I always recommend someone, especially who have not come to that place of good intimacy with the Holy Spirit, to read this book by Pastor Ben Hinn. Good morning, Holy Spirit. It reveals that the Holy Spirit is a person. You can interact with him. You can talk to him and listen to him talk to you. If you have never heard him talk to you, if you have never interacted with him as a person, you need to get deep into your intimacy and relationship with him. Because as if you do not do that, how will he guide you? Now, he knows where you are headed to. But how will he, where is the place where you meet with him? And then he educates you. And then he teaches you. If you never listen to the word of God that he uses to teach you. If you never pray, you see, if you never have intimacy with him. As much as that wisdom is in you, but you will live as a foolish person. You will, there is nothing that will ever show wisdom in your life. You will live a life of darkness while, while you still have light in the inside of you. You will live a life of lack while you still have all these things in the inside of you. You will live as a confused fella while you have the Holy Spirit. Who the Bible says when he comes, he shall even teach you of things to come. But things will just find you without preparation when you do not have the Holy Spirit. Just desire never to ignore him. Don't reject him. Don't assume him. Say hi to him. You see? Always let him know that he is acknowledged. That is why sometimes you hear me praying here and uh, I tell you even that we need to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge him. Let him know that you acknowledge his presence. You know that he is there. You know that he is working. Because he is this craftsman. On Sunday I'll be talking about the spirit of wisdom. And we'll see now this wisdom as one dimension of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of wisdom. Never ignore him. Listen to him daily. Watch daily at his posts. And then your life will be extraordinary. Your life, he will teach you. You will be planning to travel. That day he will tell you, don't travel. You will be planning to do something. He will tell you, don't do it. You will be in a place where you want to know, what do I do? And the Lord will open your eyes to see. Because wisdom is teaching you. But for how long have you ignored wisdom? You have rejected wisdom. You have refused wisdom. And then you went to seek things that wisdom could have taught you how to find them very easily. Because your priorities are upside down. Get wisdom. And wisdom will bring all other things that you need in your life. The next verse says, For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Whoever finds wisdom finds life. And finds favor. Favor with the Lord. You remember the Bible says that, and the child, this is Jesus, grew in wisdom and in the favor of God and men. When you have wisdom, you grow, you have life, and you have favor with God and even with men. Seek wisdom. It will give you favor even before the eyes of the kings and the leaders. Wisdom. The next verse says, but he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Wisdom is saying that anyone who hates me, anyone who ignores me, they do it at their own cost. I wish we had time, we read in Proverbs chapter 1, where the wisdom says that those who ignore it, wisdom will laugh at them when they are destroyed because they refused wisdom. So he said, in their day of calamity, I will laugh at them. Wisdom laughing, because wisdom was there, he wanted to teach you the right way, but you refused. But you went on another way. And so wisdom laughs at you. He sinned against He turned to be their own enemies. The one who was supposed to show them the way. But he made them to go around the same place for 40 years. The same one that was supposed to protect them. The same one that was supposed to leave them. Because they sinned against him. They grieved. They vexed the Holy Spirit. He turned to be their enemy. And the Bible says that my spirit will not strive with men. Forever. He is a gentle spirit. So when you want to push or to go your way, he just lets you go. Because he is a gentle spirit. That is why, hata kwambia ukose kuingia kwa a wrong relationship, he will show you the signs if you are not willing to follow. Now, when we talk about these things, it's about following. It's not about the Holy Spirit dragging you, dragging you into, into things. It's about following. Willingness. Willingness, following. So when you sin against him, when you grieve him, when you ignore him, then he turns to be your enemy. And sometimes he laughs at you. 
Especially when you are praying and you are telling God, oh, why did I get into this? Oh, wisdom is on the other side laughing at you. And wisdom is saying, look at her. Look at you, I told you. That time you think that God is so much concerned because you, you are heartbroken by that boyfriend and by that girlfriend. But the wisdom is crying on the other side. <laughs> huh? Because he, he wanted to show you the way, but you ignored him. Hello? How many times do you think that God is crying with you, but on the other side he is laughing at you? <laughs> uh, because you sinned against wisdom. Now you have built a house, it has fallen. Now who are you? Utalili anani? Asa kama mwenye alijenga hiyo nyumba yote ikaanguka. As much as he can cry because at that time he's the, he thinks he can cry because he has lost a lot. But where is wisdom at that time? Wisdom at that time is laughing at him because wisdom gave him so many red flags, including that day when the municipal council came and said, no, you cannot continue building. But his foolishness, not wisdom, told him, if I can get a few thousands and pay for this, then they ignored wisdom. So when that house is falling, wisdom is somewhere laughing at that man. They sinned against their own souls. They sinned against their own souls. I have found so many people, many of them heartbroken, and even many of them think that it's God who led them into those things. And when you, you listen to most of them, they never even, because many, do you know the problem with many of you? Because you never go to God to call, you never go to get direction from, from God, but you go to report and to inform God what you have planned, and you want to drag God into that thing that you have planned. So you want to go to God and tell him, Father, I have found. You know, these days people say there is no right man. You have to do what? That idiot on your, on your left, you drag that idiot on to, to your right. So you drag this idiot and you want to go and tell, Father, I have, I have found this man. And I have dragged this idiot into my right. I pray that you may walk together with us. I pray that you may bless us. I pray that you may be with us. Then that man thinks that he inquired of the Lord. They didn't. That is why I always tell any man who prays when a, a lady comes so that they may confirm whether she is the one, that man, that man is already lost. Any lady who waits for the man to come, and then when the man comes, it's the time they go before the Lord. Father, show me if he is the one or not. At that time, my brother and my sister, it will be so hard. It will be so difficult. To know whether he is the right or the wrong. Do you know what wise people do? They prepare in advance. When those people come, they just come as confirmations to you. You see them and you know. You do not even need any other sign. But someone, they go and they begin to pray that morning. Father, if that brother is the one that you have kept for me, today is on Sunday, as we go to the church, I am wearing a red, Father, a, a red dress. Make him to wear anything reddish, and then I will know he is the one. Then you don't know even Satan is always there when you are making your prayers. And actually, the next time you are making such prayer, pray, pray them in tongues. The devil does not hear in tongues. And he does not know things before you say them. So, when you say that, the devil organizes very fast. Then a brother comes. Buona sifiwe. Pengine hata ni kalamu tu, iko na kifuniko ya red hapa. And you are like, waka tunaomba hapa, tunafikiria ni kuzama, umezama kumbe, unashukuru mungu. Thank you, Lord. No, it was not God. It was not God. From the foundations, you must have understanding for you to establish something. You must have understanding. So let me say this, <laughs> that if it cannot be seen, then it is not wisdom. Wisdom needs to come to the level of building. You see? And you know when you have built something, the wisdom that was now in your head, now it is seen on the building that you made. So like we have read about God and how he established all these things. So whenever we see the heavens and the earth, whenever we think of how the earth and the heavens function, we always see the wisdom of God. Even without him speaking, but when we look at what he has created, then we see wisdom. What I want to tell you is when we look at your life, then we see wisdom. 
When we look at your marriage, at your family, when we look at your business, when we look, we see the level of your wisdom. Because people built by wisdom. So when we see your weak house, then we see lack of wisdom. When we see weakness even in finances, we see lack of wisdom. When we see weaknesses in some areas, we are seeing lack of wisdom. Because wisdom, when it is in the inside of you, it must be brought to a place of now building using that wisdom. And so that what was in your heart or in your mind now can be seen as a visible thing. And this is where many Christians are caught up. Many Christians think that all things are only in the spirit realm. Spiritual, you see? But they do not come to the place of now building those things to become physical and to be seen in their lives. So they always live in the realm of the spirit. They are always rich in the realm of the spirit. They are always going forward in the realm of the spirit. But in the physical, nothing is happening. Because they lack phronesis. Phronesis now helps you. It helps you that that wisdom in your mind, that wisdom in your heart, you bring it forth. You build and now it is seen. Now it is seen. That is why building needs wisdom. It is where now that mental wisdom becomes the physical, the, the something that can be seen. That is how God created the heavens and the earth. We are looking at the wisdom for building. The next time God wants Moses to create or to make Noah a sanctuary, to build a sanctuary. Then he calls Moses into a mountain, Mount Sinai. And he spends there with him 40 days and 40 nights, giving him a blueprint, a pattern after which he must build the, 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 the tabernacle. And one of the things he gave him and the people they were working with was the spirit of wisdom because they could not have built without wisdom. Because what God was building was something that was beyond the physical building. It was to represent something. It was symbolizing something greater. So it needed wisdom to build. In Exodus 25 verse 9, this is now God speaking to Moses on the mountain. He is telling him, according to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. You see? You will, you will make it according to the pattern that I have showed you. A wise master builder, number one, you build according to the pattern and according to the blueprint that the Lord has revealed unto you. Now, that God showed him the pattern. In other words, when they were on the mountain, it's like God opened the eyes of Moses and he saw the real tabernacle in heaven. So he was, he was supposed now to make a similar thing. Let me teach you how Sophia works. God will open your eyes or God will unveil something. So what he wants you to do is that you may be able to create the same thing that you saw. That is why God will show you, like he has been showing to some of us, preaching in stadiums. So what he wants us to do is that whatever we saw, he wants us now to bring it to be, to birth it, to build it. That it may come from the realm of the spirit into the physical realm. So when God shows you as a, million, a millionaire, you see yourself as a millionaire. What God wants you to do like he did with Moses. He has opened some place, he has uncovered some place that you may see something that you may be able to bring it forth. But for you to be able to do it, number one, now you have the Sophia. You must understand. So God is explaining every to Moses. He must comprehend. How can he build now that sanctuary here? If he has not understood the sanctuary in heaven, he must know how long it is. He must know how, how, how wide it is. He must know how high it is. He must know how deep it is. He had the understanding. That is the sunesis, comprehension. Comprehend. Exactly what God wants you to do, when He wants you to do it, how He wants you to do it, comprehend. And then after that, now is the level of execution where phronesis is needed. So, because of that, God had to anoint men. Go to chapter 31, verse 1. Chapter, uh -huh. thank you. Then God spoke to Moses, saying, The next verse, the next verse. See, I have called by name Bezarel, the son of Ur, the son of Har, of the tribe of Judah. The next verse. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge. You see also, for Moses 
to build that tabernacle here on earth, it needed those three levels. Number one is wisdom, is understanding and knowledge in all manner of workmanship. So God anointed another man, Bezarel, with the spirit in wisdom. So here it shows that this spirit, as I will teach you on Sunday, is many-sided spirit. They are what we call the seven spirits of God. So one of the spirits of God is the spirit of wisdom. Another is the spirit of understanding. Another is the spirit of knowledge. The other dimension like the spirit of might, counsel, and uh, the fear of the Lord. But here specifically, because of the building, he had to anoint this man with this spirit of wisdom, with understanding and knowledge. If you have to build anything, brothers and sisters, for we are also called to build temples, to build God houses. If you have to build, then if it is a God's house, it must be built by the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of knowledge. So God could not have made any mistake that his house may be, may be made any holy. He needed them to have the spirit of wisdom. And I pray that someone will receive the spirit of wisdom that will help you to build according to the patterns of God. To build according to, to what he has shown you. And it's not only this man, but the next man. Because it needed so many people to build. So the Lord is saying, verse 4, to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, and in bronze, Oh my God. I'll, I'll tell you this later as we come to the end. In cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. The next verse. And I, indeed, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahi Samach, uh, of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisan, that they may make all that I have commanded you. He had given them the gift of understanding and wisdom. All the workers who are supposed to build. He had filled them. When you go back to chapter 20, to chapter 26, give me verse 3. Is it chapter 26 or 28? Thank you, verse 3. So, you shall speak to all who are gifted at son, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as a priest. So, you see, there are people who God had filled with the spirit of wisdom. So they were able to work with gold, to work with silver, and to work with other things. The house of the Lord even now cannot be built by one person. But if anyone must become a builder, even in this ministry, we have so many departments, if anyone must be a builder in this ministry, and we ought to build as God wants us to build, then all of us, all of the builders, must be filled with the spirit of wisdom. If you are in this ministry, we are still building this ministry. If you are one of our builders, then you must have the spirit of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Our builders are filled that they may build in the right way. That they may Remember, this is a spirit. It is a spirit. So when you have that spirit, he controls you the way you do things. You see, when you are doing that work in the technical department, when you are doing that work in the media, you have the Holy Spirit. He is showing you the way. He is controlling you the way. And I pray that men may arise in this ministry. That from today they will go and tell the Lord, Father, as I play that keyboard, as I play that drum in the church, Father, let me do it by the spirit of wisdom. Because we know that we are building. We are building this ministry. Father, as I do that ushering, I do not just want to do it anyhow. As Father, as I am doing that work of ushering and hospitality, let me know that this is your house that is being built. I can only build after your own pattern, after your own blueprint. Father, open my eyes. Fill me with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding in the area where I am building, that I may build it well. If we have to build an everlasting ministry, a ministry that is established, we must build by the spirit of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That was the first temple. And you know, after they went to Babylon, that temple was destroyed. Now, oh, not even, okay, this is not the first temple, sorry. It was the sanctuary that was made when they were headed to, to the promised land. Now, when they came to the promised land, they continued to use, that, to use that sanctuary or tabernacle for a long time. But when now David, when now they are established in the land, you see, and David is now living well in his land, he is telling the Lord, I cannot continue living in, 
in a house and then the ark of the covenant is outside there because this was a tent they used the tent to make the first tabernacle so he is telling the lord i want to build you a house i want to build you a house but what does god tell david god tells david that will not build me a house because your hands are full of blood you have shed so much blood now but i have appointed your son solomon that he might or that he may build me a house he may build now a temple and many of you wonder why god gave solomon so much wisdom one of the reasons why he gave him wisdom is because he was a builder it was the wisdom for building you see and when the father is about to die <laughs> when the father is about to die he calls solomon and instructs him about the house that he was supposed to build Let's see why so Solomon needed wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to build God's house. David tells him, First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 5. Now David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced. And the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, famous, and glorious throughout all countries. You know we are building the ministry. Let me tell you, if you are building anything for God, it must have these three qualities. Number one, it must be magnificent. It must be full of splendor. That is what magnificence means. It must be full of splendor. Magnificent. Number two, it must be famous. Number three, it must be glorious throughout all the countries. So in other words, David is telling Solomon that if we are building God, we must, you know, our God is the greatest God among all the nations. And how will he be known to be the greatest God? It's only when we can build him a house, the Bible says, that is magnificent, number two, that is, that is, that is famous, that anyone who hears about that house, you see, number three is a house that is full of glory. That men will hear what is in that house and they will come to see. They will come to see. That is what David is telling Solomon. And this is how we must build brothers. We must build lives that are magnificent. Lives full of splendor. Not shame. Not reproach. Lives full of glory. We are great men. Every great man of God, even in the world, they were famous. They were great men. People like Job, people like Abraham. So we must know as we build our lives in Christ, we must know what we are building. We are building God's house. The Bible says that we are God's house. So as we build, the reason why you need wisdom is because you are young like Solomon and an experience. In your own wisdom, you cannot build a life. Now ask yourself, how can you build yourself up? Such that will become famous in the whole world if it does not take the wisdom of God. If it does not take the understanding and knowledge. That is why some of you should just pray and go and begin to cry before the Lord. Father, you have called me to build your house, to build my life. A marriage, Father, that is a symbol. That is, oh God, a, a, a pattern. Oh, a, that other men should see and they know you and they see you. Then you must give me wisdom to build this marriage. You, you say that a good and a wise father leaves an inheritance to his children children. Father, how will I build an empire or a financial system that my children's children must come and find? You must tell the Lord, give me wisdom to build. Because what we are building, we are not building small things. That is why I am never a man of small things. I, have nev I am never a man of just doing things. Many times even many people in this church what some of them think it does not make sense to me it makes sense so we don't just do things there must be excellence we we don't just come here and sing no there must be a way of how we are singing we don't just do ushering and other things even the church the way it is it cannot just be be, be any holy or anything no that's not how you build the house should be built with a greater mind that this house we are building, number one, it must be magnificent. It must be famous and glorious throughout the whole. As we are building ministry, this ministry, we cannot build it just in the mind of Kasarani and Nairobi or Kenya. 
as we build Hebron ministry, we are building with a mind that it must come to a place where it is known all over the world, where it is famous, that people may hear from Saudi Arabia that there is a ministry in Kenya and they come. That is how nations will come to us. That is how people, men, kings will come to us. We know what we are building. We are not just building anyhow. That is why it is better we take time, brothers and sisters. Hello? Uh. My brother tulikuwa tunaongea na yeye juzi. Nilikuwa namuonyesha kwa nini hata ministry unajua sometimes people may look at what you are doing and how you are going on and they think there is nothing that is happening. And another person tells come and tells you ah I just began my own. Hata kama ni biashara and every. I just began my own and now I have picked up. You need to understand if a house is to be built a hundred story building they may spend months and months or even years without seeing anything coming up because they are going deep because how deep they have gone it will determine how high they are growing but someone who just need two floors you see or even one floor they can finish it in one day so acha kukimbizana wale watu wanapandisha manyumba zao hapana be at your own pace because you are the one who knows what you are building hello i always tell you we know better ways of filling this church <laughs> If our aim is just filling this church, I just need one meeting with all of you and then we ask ourselves, give us ideas on how we can fill this church. I know many of you will come with very brilliant ideas and I tell you in the next one month or two months, this house will be full. But you must understand how to build. It's not just about rising very fast. It's knowing where you are going and what you are doing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And I told you, I warned you sometimes about these cars you are driving and that car inakuja inakupita na mbio ni kama inaenda inaenda Mombasa alafu inaenda unapata imesimama pale mbele unajiuliza sasa hii gari vile imenipita kumbe ilikuwa inaenda hello usiwahi kuwa na pressure bwana asifiwe so this is how the house was supposed to be built very fast let's just read through very fast uh -huh. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. The next verse. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. The next verse. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, You have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Verse 9. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies all around. His name shall be Solomon, for I will give uh, peace and quietness to Israel in his days. Verse 10. He shall build a house for me by my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and he will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. The next verse. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you, and may you prosper and build the house of the Lord your God, and he said to you. So it is David now praying or uh, speaking to Solomon. Only may the Lord give you wisdom, understanding, and give you the charge concerning Israel that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. The other time we saw that David advised Solomon to get wisdom. He's the one who advised Solomon, and so Solomon knew what to pray for when God came to him in a dream. But we see another level here. Even David himself, he prayed for wisdom and understanding upon his child before he left. He told him, now because you have to build God's house and it must have those qualities, I only make one prayer for you. He did not make many, uh, very many other prayers for him, but he says that may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding. Because that's what you are supposed to build. You cannot fathom it. You cannot comprehend it by your own mind. You need the wisdom of God, the sunesis of God, the comprehension that you might be able to comprehend what you must build. So he prayed for him. So the next time this guy, a very young man, God comes to him. He knew, I need wisdom because of the responsibilities that are ahead of him. And that is why God did not have a problem with giving this man. Because he knew that this man needs wisdom to build. He needs wisdom to build. I'm talking about the wisdom for building. If you have to build, you must have wisdom. Then this temple continued until when they went to Babylon. And when they went to Babylon, the temple was destroyed. But after 70 years in Babylon, they came back and... 
Now, the temple was supposed to be built again. Was supposed to be reconstructed again. Who constructed the second temple? Is this man called Zerubbabel. You see? Zerubbabel. Now, I, I will be talking about specifically now about this on Sunday because it is the spirit of wisdom. But let me just, let's just read a verse. Uh -huh. Zechariah 4 verse 6 says, Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 4. Leave the other part of David. It's okay. Let, let's come here. Verse, <laughs> go to verse 6. I said verse 6. Verse 6. Go to verse 6. Thank you. You know, before here, we could have begun in verse 1 on Sunday. We shall do it. This man, Zechariah the prophet, he saw a vision. And you will know that that is a vision of the, se he saw the seven spirits of God. And I told you in those seven spirits of God, there is the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of, and you see here, the Bible is, the Bible is talking about Zerubbabel, because he is the one there that was building. Then, the Bible is saying, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of the host. You will not do it by your power or your might, but by my spirit, by the Holy Spirit. The next verse says, Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone. Capstone is the last stone of the building, of the temple, with shouts of grace, grace to it. So he will build by grace. He will finish by grace. So he was given the grace to build. The grace to build. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. He was filled with the spirit that he may bring it to a completion by the spirit of God. See next verse what, what it says. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 9, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. You see, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the temple. His hands shall finish it. His hands shall finish it. So it was about the temple. So the seven spirits of God that were shown to Zechariah, God filled them to this man that he might be able to rebuild the temple. Not by power, not by might, but by the spirit, by grace. He was given the grace to begin building and the grace to put the last capstone. The grace for builders. The grace for builders. The grace for builders. He built by the grace, by the spirit of God. If you are a builder, you must receive the grace to build. Even in this ministry, we must all receive the grace to build, the wisdom to build, the understanding to build, the knowledge to build. Lastly, let's see this man called Paul. Now, in the New Testament, he also needed to build God's house, but now it was not a physical house. It was not a physical temple. But these are the people that laid the foundation of the gospel to build God's house. To build God's house. And he is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Paul is also a builder. Now he is building God's temple. Not a physical one, but a spiritual temple. You see, he is saying, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, and you are God's building. He is telling them, you are God's building. Remember in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, don't go there. The Bible says that we also as living stones are being built up to God's house. We are being built up. We are stones, living stones. We are being built up. So he is telling them, you are a building. In other words, as I preach to you, what I am doing, I am building God's house. I am building. And then he says the next verse, verse 10. According to the grace of God which was given to me. So for him to build, there was a grace given to him. The grace for builders. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. That is where our subtopic is coming from. A wise master builder. So now he specifies the, the grace that was given to him. The spirit that was given to him. It was specific wisdom. That he may build as a wise master builder. Grace was given to him. 
as a wise master builder, he said that I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. Now this is where we are coming in. Because Paul laid the foundation. What I am doing right now as I preach to you, I am now building on that foundation that Paul established. So we are builders. We are building. All of us are builders. We are building on the foundation. But he is saying, as for me, I did my work. I established the foundation as a wise master builder. Because grace was given to me for, to, me, to be able to establish the the foundation. Then he says, verse 11, this is so important. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Verse 12. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wounds, hay, straw, just stay there. So he is saying, as for me, I build up. And we see what he used to build. The materials that he used. He is saying, I have made sure that the foundation is firm. <laughs> and no other foundation will be laid. But now men who come after me, they will only now build on that foundation. I have built as a wise master builder so that it doesn't matter how high you want to build because the foundation is firm. Now you can build the highest you can. So as who came after Paul, we never go down to, deep, to the deep, but we go high. We don't go to the deeps and the depth where you were. But we can build as high as we want. Because the foundation is strong. Because if he, he formed it as a wise master builder. So when we are building on that foundation. We can build as high as we want. But he is warning. The problem is. What will you use to build? He is saying some may build using gold, silver, precious stones, wounds, hay and straw. The next verse says. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. The next verse. If anyone works will, uh, which he has built will, uh, on it endure, he will receive a reward. The next verse. If anyone works is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet as so through fire. He is saying now what will test the work is fire. Now tell me, kwa zile materials zote tumeona ameweka hapo, which material is not affected by fire, but it is only strengthened by fire. So, he says that he, he built as a wise master builder. Wise men build using gold and silver. They use precious things to build. They never, use, they never build with common things. They never. You never build your marriage with common things. You never build your finances, your ministry with common things. They build using gold. Because they know that one day, whatever I am building will be shaken. Fire will come. If it was hay, if it was grass, if it was wood, all these things will be affected by fire. But when fire or gold goes through fire, it is refined. It becomes even more finer, more precious, and more better. So you're saying, I have built as a wise master builder. I have built with gold. Now, be careful. Anyone who is coming to build, the same grace that was given to me, the same wisdom that was given to me, you must also receive the wisdom that as you build, you build with gold. You build with the right things. Oh, because fire will come one day. And if your house does not endure, then you will not be a wise man. You remember what I told you about the parable of Jesus? men built the house. Only the house that was built by the wise man that, that, that endured that test. What will make you to endure when temptations and floods come is how you build. What did you use to build? Uliza Jiraniyako, what are you using to build? Are you building with the common things? These are people who never want to get deep in anything. Even preaching, when a preaching seems as if it is getting deeper, they are always, huh? Those are simple-minded men. They don't comprehend issues. They don't love things that they, you know gold, you never find gold on, on the road. <laughs> For you to get gold, eh? So there are people, even when they take the Bible, they always say, no, I'm not even understanding anything. And they choose to sleep. Those people, the way they are building, oh my God. And whatever they build comes down. But have you ever seen deep men? 
These are men who pray for hours. These are men who, they read the word, they seek, they listen. I did not understand this one. Let me go even to the commentators or co co commentaries. Let, let, let me listen. A man who wants understanding, they are building with that which is not common. These are people who can do everything they can do to gain wisdom and understanding. They don't just build on sand. They don't just build using raw materials. They build something that costs them. Brothers and sisters, anything that you'll enjoy in your life, it must cost you. It must. It must cost you time. It must cost you must sacrifice. There are things that you, are, you, must, you must sacrifice. Now let me, let me ask you, for me to come and preach this sermon here, do, do, you, you, uh, you think I, how long do I need to prepare? How long do I need to put all these sermons or these scriptures everywhere together? How much time? You know, I told you before I began preaching this sermon, I, I was in a time when I was learning it. Do you know, one of the, the, the men of God I, 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 I was learning from about wisdom, do you know how many series I did? Just about this topic. My wife alikuwa nakuja anapata, eh, kai, bado. Na anapata ati ndiyo niko, eh, niko part 10. They were 14 parts. 14 parts. All of them, one, and, one hour. And every one of them, one hour plus. And I did them in one week. And not actually every day. I have another one I want to do next week. It has also 14 parts. Now specifically about knowledge. I have books. I am reading. At the same time, I wanted to read all the scriptures, including the whole of Proverbs. That I may understand it. This is a man, you, when you know you are building, you don't use the common things. You don't build on sand. On sand. Just building. I just want to, to build something. That something may, 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 may be seen. That is why sometimes you see us pushing you. We want to preach sometimes. If you do one hour, and of the 45 minutes many of you love, we know we must, we must sometimes stretch. We know what we are building. We know what we are doing. <laughs> uh, you know, listen to me. Listen to me carefully. I, I am explaining the reason as to why sometimes we stretch you. If you are building a hundred story building and another person is building five story building, they will not do it at the same pace. Now, this one of their hundred story building, he knows that he has so much work to do. He will have to employ so many people to do. And some of those buildings, even in town, Zinajangawa usiku na mchana. Lakini sasa nyumba yako, ya nini hata haina gorofa, unajenga usiku na mchana ya nini? But the other person knows there is so much work here. We need to push ourselves. We need, we, we need to move. If you have to do this, because also time is going, we, we need to stretch. How many people are ready to be stretched to make sure that because we know where we are going? Hello? Bwana Sithiwe. See, at Nataka Sasan was stretched for another one hour. Lakini na maanisha acha ni verse 16 in Asema. Do you, uh, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? So he has a memory of I have built a foundation as a wise man. Now, be careful of how you build. Now, he is saying, don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? So all of us are builders. We are building our, ourselves as the sanctuary of God, the temple of God. Now, how will you build? How will you build? How will you build? How will you build? Because we are all builders. We are being built. Now, every person is the body of Christ, or every person is a, is a temple of God, as an individual. And also when we come together, we come together as parts, as stones, different stones. We are also built to, to the house of God. But every one of us is also a complete house of God. So you must be built up. And who will build you? No other person. You will build yourself. That is why you have to avail yourself to such services. You hear, you are being built up. That is why you need to, be, to read the word of God. You are building. Remember, Paul is saying that I commend you, brethren, I commend you to the word of God and the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. 
The word of God builds. The word of God builds. The wisdom to build. The wisdom to build. How will you build? The wisdom to build. Psalms 127 verse 1 says, If God does not build a house, then those who do it, they do it in vain. How are you building? Are you doing it only with your own strength? With your own power? Now, after your house is over, because when we see it, we will see wisdom. What are we going to see after you have built? Because what we must see is what will show whether you have wisdom or not. Now imagine how Solomon built this house. Hello? Can you give me just five minutes? We read something through. Let, let me see how many people will give me. If you don't give me, we just pray and uh, end the service. Amen. First Kings chapter 10 verse 1. If it is not sin, it is not wisdom. If it is only in your mouth, just talk in wisdom. Ikama wale watu wanaenda kufundisha watu how to become rich. Lakini hata kwa hiyo mkutano ni fair aliomba ndio aende kwa hiyo mkutano. Sikiza mtu kama huyo wewe sasa uko lost kama yeye. Bwana asifiwe. Ni kwa nini hawaja apply ile kitu ambayo wame? Niwaambia kuna mtu amesomea business studies na ana brag na certificates lakini anastarau kufanya biashara. Kuna wisdom amekosa phronesis. They might have the knowledge and the understanding but they don't have the power to do it, the power to become. Bwana asifiwe. So it, if it cannot be seen, if it, can, it has not come to the level where we, without you speaking, we can see wisdom in your life. When people come to this church, they should see wisdom in everything we are doing. The Bible says about Solomon, after he built the temple, and now he also built the palace, his own house. And one woman from here, Ethiopia, she went to hear of the, and to see of the wisdom of Solomon. The Bible says, now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the law, she came to test him with hard questions. Queen of Sheba came with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem. She came to Jerusalem, verse 2, with a very great retinue, with camels that bore spices, very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. Watu wakikuja kuona mtu waisa wakujagi mikono mitupu. The day you become wise, people will never come to you empty-handed. If people are still coming to you empty-handed, pray that God may give you more wisdom. Someone say amen. That anyone who comes to see you, they come carrying something. Some gold, some silver, and some precious things. That is how your life will be filled with precious things. The next verse says... <laughs> The next verse, verse 3. We go a bit faster. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain to her. Do you see the kind of wisdom that God gave to this man? That the woman came testing Solomon with hard questions. But the Bible says Solomon was able to answer all her questions. In her days, there was nothing. There was nothing that Solomon could not have answered. And it is a spirit you can receive because it is a spirit of wisdom. So that men will come to you. They will come to you seeking answers. If you have answers to give men, then they will flood. Watakuja kuliko vile walienda loliondo. Muli muna kumbuka vile walienda loliondo. Watakuna kamze kamepata sijui dawa ya nini. They will come to you if you have answers. Those who are sick, they will come to you because you have answers. Those who are poor, they will come to you. Unajua kuna watu ndiyo wakuongelesha kuna lipango wa pesa ngapi, Minister Anthony? Can you just tell them? Some people just to listen to them. Some people like TD Jakes, the time they used to come here. Just for the motivation of speaking. Do you know how much they used to, to charge? You never go to see those people without anything. The next verse says, And when the Queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, this is what I wanted us to see. He did not only hear the wisdom through the answers that Solomon gave him, but he also saw wisdom. Wisdom must be seen. That is why it is needed to build. It must be seen. So the Bible says that he saw all the wisdom of Solomon. How did he see the wisdom of Solomon? Number one, the house that he had built. Both the house of the Lord and the palace. The house of the Lord took seven years to build. 
the palace took 11 years to build. The Bible says that when this queen of Sheba saw the house, he knew that this man, for this house to be built, ah, this is great wisdom. She saw wisdom in that house. The next verse comes, the food on his table. So these are some of the things about the Lifanya on wisdom. So even the food of, on the table showed wisdom. Brothers and sisters from today, the food that you eat, it, all, it always shows the kind and the level of wisdom that you have. The kind of the food that you eat. One as if he were. <laughs> Another thing is the sitting of his servants. When he came. And I was reading this and I remembered something. There is a man of God we always follow. He preaches every Thursday. And so my wife last week, she, the one thing she noted and she was showing me is how they had arranged their seats. True or false? They had arranged their seats. And many thousands of people on the ground. Mahali wameweka mahali pa kupitia ukiangalia kutoka hii mwisho mpaka mwisho mwingine unaona mwisho. Then zile zimewekwa hivi nazo ukiangalia mwisho ni the same level. So wakati kuna hiyo aerial photo wakiichukua unaona like ni vitu zimegawanywa na ziko. Wakati unaona that kind of even arrangement of seats you see wisdom. Hello. The Bible says the service of his waiters and their appeals. The service of their waiters. Our ushers I pray for you today. And for our hospitality department. That is why another time I, I especially talked about the hospitality department. The way you serve people, it shows wisdom. The way you serve people. Hello. The way you have dressed when you are serving people. Imagine Anasha comes and she is dressed na kangu kameka hivi. Wakati mshirika naona, anakuja naona wisdom ama naona. So, the service and the appeals, the way you, you clothe yourselves. It shows wisdom. Wana asifiwe. So some of us kuna mavazi kutoka leo sasa tunafatu wa chane nazo. Wana asifiwe. It shows wisdom. The way you are serving people. The way you will bring that tea to the pastor. The way you will serve that water to a minister. The way you will, even the way you serve your husbands at home. It shows how much wisdom you have. Lakini wale wanakuliaga sufuria tutawambia nini sasa na mwingine anakula na mwiko unapata mwiko ndio ame sijui bwana asifiwe nakukulia vitu zingine fane fane hata kwa nyumba mimi kama especially ni mzee hata kama nika kitu kadogo tunakula my wife knows and I, I i bless the lord because she is actually the one who does it anajua vile anafaa ni sawa hello ama ujua yona umekatakatiwa matunda ukajiuliza mipanga imetumiwa kukatakata hii melon ama ni kisu Wisdom. The, then the, at the end, the Bible says his cup bearers, how they carried, how they served in that temple or even in that, in that palace. You see, and his entryway by which he went to the house of the law, there was no more spirit in her. Then it's like there was no more spirit in this woman when she saw even the entry of how this man went into the house of the law. The entry, how he went. I want to tell you there is wisdom of how you enter the house of God. How you come to the house of the Lord. I tell you some of you, you are already late coming to the church. Nisa nene na kitu. Unaona? Na badala ukuje umekimbia. Unaona? Ukuje ujue nimechelewa. Ukuje kama umeketi chini vizuri na uendele. Wengine wenyu muna kujaga ni kama hata ujue umechelewa. Unaanza ku, ku una, iyo ndiyo siku nasalimia kila mtu kwa baraba. Hata ukikuja church unaanza na asha pale. Napata tutoto. Na umekuja saane na nusu. Maombi imesha aisha. Praise and worship ni kuisha inaisha. Huyo mtu even the way they are entering the house of God. There is no wisdom. No wisdom. Si unajua. Hakuna aja tuongea hizi vitu ni kama. Si ni vizuri tunazileta kwa hizi sasa level ya mahali tunaweza apply. The way you enter the house of God. It shows whether you are wise or you are not wise. Hallelujah. Buwana asifiwe. Yani. Unajua one of the wisdom ni kujua nimechelewa una redeem time lakini kwanza wale watu usumbua mpaka kanisani sana wale walikuja late Mtu amekuja wakati pastor anaanza kubiri amekuja hata amjamaliza 4 minutes anatoka anaingia anaingia washroom akikuja ana kazi zingine tano anatoka sijui ni kitchen anaingia sijui anakuja hako huyo mtu hata the way they are conducting themselves no wisdom Hello The next verse says Then she said to the king it was true report which I had in my own land about your words 
and your wisdom. The next verse. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceeds the fame which I had. She tells him, I heard about you. But it seems when I came, I have found, I did not even hear half of what I have seen. She saw wisdom. So people may hear wisdom, but when they see wisdom, it makes greater impact in their lives, more than hearing wisdom. So she had had wisdom from far, but when she came, she saw that she had not even had half of the wisdom of Solomon. The next verse says, Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants, who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. What is she doing here now? She is like an adjuecoco place, your servants, kwa Solomon. This is how men submit to you when you are wise. She is saying, it's better to be a servant. You are, that I may just stand hearing your wisdom every day. Oh my God. What level of wisdom is that? Blessed is the Lord your God who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel because the Lord has loved Israel forever. Therefore, he made you king to do justice and righteousness. What is she doing now here? She is also now worshipping the God of Solomon because of the wisdom that she saw. The same way Nebuchadnezzar did. The, name, the same way Pharaoh did when they saw the wisdom of God. Also Queen Sheba, she is now saying, blessed be your God. She is worshipping the only true God because of wisdom. Wisdom can make people to worship your God. Wisdom can make people... To worship your God. We do not have time to go and read the whole verse. But let, let's, jump, let's jump a bit and uh, continue. But let's jump. Let's, let's, let's jump. Let's go to about uh, verse 18. Check from uh, verse 18. Let's go verse 18. Check from verse 18. So the next verse. Thank you. The next verse. Uh -huh, the next verse. 21. Yes, this is what I wanted. The Bible says, this is how, this is how it is in the Ozile to the Queen of Sheba, Leona. Anasema, the Bible says, all the kings or King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold. And all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Not one was silver, for this was counted as nothing in the days of Solomon. He had two palaces. One is this, is called the house of the forest of Lebanon. The Bible says in both, is all vessels, all vessels were of gold. Nothing in his palace was of silver. In his time, Silver was counted as nothing. Silver was counted as nothing. It did not have value. So this is what the Queen of Sheba came and said. They are serving using gold. Everything, the seat I'm sitting on is gold. The cup I'm using is gold. The plate that I am using is gold. The spoon. Now do you know how much gold, how worth gold is? Some of you, Unaitaji took a gold, Kanatoshana hivi. And your life will never remain the same. Hallelujah. But imagine this man, everything in his house was gold. Everything in the palace was gold. Everything in the house of go gold. Gold. He coated. Utasoma, enda usome, utaona, paka floor. The walls, they were all coated with gold. Sisiya mikala ya gold. They were coated with gold. Even the floor, coated with gold. And the Bible continues and explains how much gold used to come to him every year and that the, the, the kind of gold that he had. But I wanted you to get there is a level where gold can be nothing to you. Where silver can no in a cosa importance kwako, si kitu kwako. Hello? Kama vile wengine wenyu sa hizi mashilingi siyo kitu kwako, buwana asifiwe. Kama vile wengine wenyu sasa ma hundreds, hundreds sasa kwa wengine wenyu siki. Kwa mtu mwingine ni kitu kubwa, lakini kwa wengine wenyu hundreds sa hizi, siyo kitu buwana asifiwe. Kama vile wengine sa hizi thousands, hai ya uelewe hiyo. Kama mtu ajaongea in something that is six figures kuendelea, uh, you see? Now, the same way, it was considered like nothing. 
Bwana asifiwe. Can we rise up on our feet? <laughs> In the name of the Lord Jesus, build us. The reason as to why they were supposed to have all this much gold is because the house of the Lord needed to be built using gold. And we must use gold to be the house of the Lord. That is why we need wisdom. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. Wisdom to build, wisdom to build, wisdom to build. In the name of the Lord Jesus, wisdom to build, wisdom to build, wisdom to build, the wisdom to build, the wisdom to build, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 27 says, verse 27 says, Verse 27 says, I want to pray for you. We might not have time to pray, but I will pray for you. The Bible says that the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. And he made cinder trees as abundance as the sycamores which are in the lowland. He made silver to be as common as stones. In the days of Solomon silver was as common as gold silver was as common sorry as stones 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 as common as stones we must build there is something I'm, 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 I'm bringing to you you must understand what I'm doing and if we must be wise builders we must build using gold and that is why the Lord is saying in the book of Haggai chapter 2 uh, from verse 6 to 9 that I will shake once again the heavens and the earth and all the precious things will be brought into my house he says gold and silver are mine and the latter temple must be glorious than the former temple what will make it glorious it will be used it will be built using so much gold more than the gold that Solomon used more than the gold that Moses used. More than the gold that was ever used. The temple, the latter temple must be built using gold. That is what a wise master does. He only builds using gold. No common things. But gold. That is what the book of Haggai says. In the book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 60 and verse 17. I don't know why you are not giving me those scriptures. Give me this one. I have to read this. Isaiah, Isaiah 60 verse 17. I want you to go and meditate upon this one scripture. Isaiah 60, 17. Isaiah 60, 17. The Bible says, Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. And instead of stones, iron. I will also make your officer's peace and your magistrate's righteousness. This is where the Bible says, Arise and shine then the bible is saying instead of bronze i will give you gold instead of bronze you see instead of iron the lord is saying i will exchange it the next verse says i will exchange every iron with silver then i will exchange every every stone i will exchange it to iron that is what the lord is saying exchange 